Hi, uh, my name is Przemek Jakubczyk. I work um, at Applause in Warsaw as an Android tech lead. And um, I'd like to um, share my experience, actually, um, from my work. Uh, it's based on my daily, uh, daily comments. And I made a presentation named um, It's Always Your Fault, uh, a guide to make a crash-proof libraries. Uh, because um, when we ship our software to clients, they don't care if um, they made the wrong configuration or they made a mistake in a build script or just in any case, they always blame us. So no matter how big shitstorm uh, is coming by, uh, it lands on my desk. So it's always like that. And uh, when you make a library, uh, your life is going to be um, a little bit uh, less complicated, I believe, is, if it's an open source, because you can say it doesn't work. Okay, so make a pull request, add some tests, and I'm ready to, uh, to add this um, this code. But uh, if you if you do uh, work similar uh, as mine, so you ship uh, a library to clients, uh, it's uh, it's no case. So um, as a background, um, at a plus, um, I wrote that actually I'm responsible for quality, and uh, some some background know that we do crash in the bug reporting library. It's something similar than uh, you have like Crashlytics, but more uh, um, it has more features. And it's uh, I made a number for a few days ago. It shipped over 1,000 customers. And these are not end clients because uh, end clients is just users as as we sit here. So probably the the audience is much much bigger. So um, the thing is that, as I said at the beginning, our SDK works with apps around the world. So this is really challenging for us. Uh, I'm telling us because the team is actually very big. It's two, peop two people. <laughs> uh, but still, it's a valid. Uh, right, so a little bit more history. Uh, I, joined, I joined the company two years ago without any QA. I, I said QA, but actually, like uh, there was a talk about uh, the quality as well um, in, the, in the room, too. Um, it's not only like testing, it's actually overall uh, about the, the quality of, of your product. So as today we have uh, one 1,800 unit tests covering 3K methods, uh, which is quite a high number for, uh, for the such small product. And um, I ran it yesterday, we have 82% lines covered. It's from uh, cold coverage from IntelliJ. I had problems with Jacoco. Um, Still, I mean, we not, I don't want to target like 100%. It's not, it's not a deal. It's just uh, um, just some number showing that uh, we do actually uh, work to make it crash proof. Um, right. So, um, the, for example, the last major problem we had uh, reported from our customers that some uh, problems with supporting Marshmallow because of the runtime permissions. I think uh, if each of you try to work with runtime permissions. It's not an easy task, as Google said on uh, Google I/O and uh, further presentations. It's a very complicated issue to solve. Um, anyway, we did some support, but it's 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 not the problem right now. But the key is that for over six months we didn't have any report from the clients that um, something is crashing, something is not working as designed. So this is some a little bit commercial of myself <laughs> that uh, I do care about the quality. So um, let's start. So um, I suppose that each of you tried even to make some kind of library uh, over GitHub or small application and try to share it uh, with uh, with wider audience and that benefit. You know, okay, I'm gonna ship something and maybe some some other people just point my uh, errors or mistakes. It's cool, and we want to we want to learn. Um, so first of all. Um, the SDK must be universal. It's it. It cannot be like okay. It it works only in this 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 in this case. Uh, if it's not, then it's not. It there's no value. So, for example, uh, it should work uh, in every provided configuration. So, okay, the when when you the 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 developer starts your code, uh, it has to be uh, well understood how to run it. And what kind of mistakes uh, the developer can uh, can make, and handle the uh, edge cases. Um, the other thing is to be robust. Robust means that is really strong and uh, um, very. Uh, it's just crashless, basically. In our world, it's just crashless. Uh, okay, so. Um, it's kind of similar that uh, the configuration actually has to work in any environment. It 
they don't care if it's Android 6.0, 2.3, or it's a Samsung HTC, it's a tablet, or it's a smartwatch. They don't care. If you ship something and you say it works on a, on a mobile phones, specifically mobile phones, not tablets, then you make a promise, it works. It cannot be this way that, okay, it works only on Samsung. Then your audience is still big, but it's like uh, one third of the, of the cake. So um, as, a, as a last um, uh, adjective, uh, maybe, it's be defensive. So um, if, if it's something go is, is going wrong, uh, try to handle the case. And even if it's something really unusual uh, that you didn't expect um, to have such a problem, OK, report it, but don't crash. OK, so catch this exception, fail. If you don't know the scenario, cool. Just report it silently and just continue to work. Your library cannot just stop working in some random moment. If it does, um, using it, it might be very difficult because you, as a developer, I don't know how, for example, crash analytics work in the, you know, in the background. I don't care. If it stopped, I, I say, why it stopped? I don't like it. Let's use something else. OK, so um, let's start actually with the with the uh, tips and tricks uh, I wanted to share. They're not very big, actually, but you know when you combine all the small stuff into one bigger piece, um, actually you can you can benefit uh, some good figure. So first is Gradle. Uh, who's not using Gradle? OK, some hands. Cool. So use it. Um, it might be funny, but Gradle was introduced maybe like two years ago. So um, right now, with uh, most of the developers are using Gradle. I understand that in some cases uh, your corporate department IT slash help desk they don't allow you to install Android Studio and use the latest developer tools. Um, shame on them. Um, I want to any harm. Um, why do you use Gradle? Actually, because it's bundled. I mean, the Android is Gradle right now. They put so much effort to enable more tools, and um, Android Studio is getting even even better uh, with the integration. And more, what's more uh, important, for example, comparing to iOS, that they don't have native built environment. They have some bunch of, bunch of scripts. So overall, they need to write uh, Gradle or some Ruby on Rails uh, scripts or any kind of uh, other build system. So as as for this, we are happy because we have something which is just supported and is like required from uh, from the authors of Android system that yes, we use Gradle. Okay, so um, the first trick is very is very sim very simple, but what does it say? Um, so resource prefix, why is important? If you ship um, your library with some UI elements, you add styling, you add dimensions, you add images, basically everything. Every resource is going to be bundled with, uh, with the AIR file. And why the prefix is very important? Because if you import a library, you can overwrite every single piece of the code. So uh, for instance, we often, uh, as a developers, use styles. And um, for example, we have default widget like button. And we specify some margins, some backgrounds, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we call it the style button. So if I would name my button like, like a button, then it means that the developer will overwrite my button. So my UI will look, well, it, it, it won't look, simply. So having this prefix it actually saves you a lot of time to debug why actually some part of UI hasn't been layouted or uh, colored in the way you designed. Fortunately, uh, Android Studio and Gradle, they have like a very deep conf uh, you know, integration uh, for this feature. So um, actually, Android Studio underlines while you're writing that, sorry, uh, it hasn't been prefixed uh, with, for example, in my case, it's just a company name, but it might be just a project name. Saves a lot of time. Um, the other small thing, it's uh, uh, what we missed actually in the uh, ant-based build scripts that we cannot put uh, values from, from the build scripts to the application itself. This is one of the methods. Actually, there's another one to add to build.config, uh, which might be easier in some, some cases. Um, but I wanted to highlight uh, actually this one because 
I used like a library version from my build script from Gradle.properties to have like everything consistent in one place. So I need to bundle it somehow. But I use this as resources by some, some reason anyway. But look at this one, applaus dash library version, right? So actually this one got this one to make it work. So actually right here you have a combination of two small two small tricks which uh, you can use easily in the code and be safe that nobody will overwrite the value of your library version, which might be critical for debugging because usually you start your SDK and see, okay, I'm initializing SDK version 2.3, build code, I don't know, 2047, and it's ready to start. So if somebody would just easily overwrite because any can, any, anyone can make like a, this part, library version or application version, whatever. Okay, so um, as for Gradle, um, it's, it gave us uh, a lot of power to um, integrate our custom scripts. Um, so in, in this case, um, we can easily write our own task that is depending on our uh, assemble release in, the, um, in, the, in, the, in this case, and copy it to just another place. Maybe it sounds simple, but for example, um, at this moment, you have only one uh, only one version. It's uh, it's just a version. But in in future, you can have release and debug and free or paid slash production uh, staging whatever. So here you can just wrap your task using build all. So for example, on Jenkins, the task will st will stay. So there's no need to come. I mean, to reconfigure the the, the machine and copy to another path, it might be, I mean, even here, you can uh, put a, a closure and just put it to some I know, S3 bucket or any remote uh, storage. So um, this is actually, um, while I was uh, learning actually Gradle for, for the quite a while, um, very, uh, <laughs> very interesting question, and it comes very often, uh, how to pass argument to tasks. I said, you know, I'm I'm giving the book. You know, because I work with you. <laughs> okay, so um, no encouragement. It's not possible. Um, the way how the Gradle is uh, is, is built and uh, uh, the evaluation process and the task and all the all these graphs, um, it was like a conscious decision decision that task is something like lives in the, uh, its own life. It cannot be parameterized. So, for example, if you like to, let's say, mimic the parameters, just create a new task for each configuration. So, for example, if I say, for me, build all for, would be just assemble free release and assemble page release. This, actually, this is kind of, this is actually parameter. So, to combine other small tasks to one, one bigger one, and as I said before, you still have this build all, for example, on Jenkins machine running like every every pull request, every commit. While here you have you quite say because if you add another flavor, it's awesome. You don't need to change anything. Everything is here. This is actually the parameter. So, what else about the Gradle? So, uh, it's quite often quoted. <laughs> Great responsibility. So um, the very important thing about the Gradle is the execution time. So each time you you run Gradle wrapper, um, it has to. Um, I mean, the Gradle needs to pass every build script, every uh, every link to another build script, and and so on and so on. And this is called evaluation phase. And actually, at this moment, it just checks if ev ev everything just integrated, if it just bundled, and it's the configuration is fine, while um, it's not like running everything. It's just getting the conf configuration ready. It's why it's very important because, uh, for example, if you have, if you like to use uh, version number based on so on your uh, version control system, a note in Git is not very easy because actually we don't have like a number of commits. Um, so you would run. This like okay, um, like in SVN on uh, on in uh, Mercurial, how many comments it was in 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 this, in this branch and name it uh, using you know the count. Well, actually, each query to this to the version control system takes time. Maybe it's small, but if you run Gradle like thousand times a day, 
it's it might really get up to one minute. But this is like a small small thing, just to get the, the version number. Um, so another very bad example to to omit very I strongly encourage. Um, don't make make any HTTP calls during the uh, evaluation process because you you can have like a huge delay because you're working right now in the cafe, not in your office that you have like a 100 megabit symmetric bandwidth with delay less than two milliseconds. I mean, okay, in an office it works great, but if you work outside of the office or on a slower machine with some limitations, actually within here you can have like a delay of 10 seconds on each run. How often do you run your build to compile or test? Three times a minute, actually, in, if you just rolling out the tests. So it saves you a lot of time and please don't do it. It's, it's just no, no. <laughs> so um, how to um, override, I mean, how to work with it. These are the just bad, bad, uh, bad examples. So um, use them in tasks. So for example, if you try to build uh, um, a release build and you'd like to add this version number or version code or any other, let's say, custom stuff, do this ins only inside this, this task. You can specify in Gradle um, the dependencies. You can you can say that, okay, please run this task first, then do the assembling. So actually, you you can use, of course, this VCS is great. I mean, it solves many problems with versioning, but you can use this task only once on, on the on Jenkins machine. You don't need, actually, this, this version number during your local development. All right, so that was, that was part of the Gradle. Um, Java, this is more controversial, <laughs> but um, still. Um, catching ex exceptions, so I, as I said, it's basically better to silently go down and um, just restart ourselves, um, but it's really tempting to catch an exception, just the base class, it's really, because it just works. But actually, um, even in this example, if you see network get clients, okay, you have some kind of abstract interface for network access, API, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, you can have like a different kind of exceptions, like IO, so the, the connection is just broken. Uh, you can have like logical exceptions, so the query you provided to the server side, it's, it's not valid, it doesn't work, and, and any others. So, okay, I understand that in some cases you just want to catch the exception, just forget it, okay, it was one, one try and I won't do it again. True, might be um, helpful, but I really encourage you to split those in the like IO exception on any kind of exception that can wrap even the different types to your API exception or, or something. Because API exception might sound like, a, okay, this is an exception I can see while com communicating with the server, but it's sometimes it's because of I.O. and you can see in the stack trace, okay, this is I.O., okay, I understand. Still, it's not, um, and even though if, you, if you're working with, um, with the code in from inside Andro Android, it's okay, um, it's often like a runtime, a runtime exception thrown, but is it like better to okay check actually what kind of runtime exception has uh, has been thrown, and React it's you know, better. And for this, I mean, like Gautier said on the previous presentation uh, an hour ago, um, if you used uh, static code analysis tools, this is the first thing it it would warn. Java is like twenty years old, and people that right now they're smart enough that don't follow this uh, this case. So um, the, other, the other thing we introduced quite a while ago that's in our code, there are no nulls. Um, because, ba okay, let's start with the example that's gonna be next slide uh, with deeper explanation there, anyway. So let's assume that we have an interface like API that does some post request with some action, whatever. It's might, um, it's simple, cool, but I often use the pattern to just create an empty interface. It does nothing. Why? Because when I get an API, for example, from Dagger or from any, let's say, provider from my, from my API, because it might be like a production API or staging, I don't care if it's null or not. How, how often do you write if not null, if not null, if not null? Very often. But uh, of course, it's very good because it's defensive, as I said in the beginning, but um, 
here you, you it looks much better because you don't care if it's not null. If it's if it's actually the the conf configuration is empty, it won't do anything. So, as an extension of the <laughs> of the previous slide, uh, actually null pointer, null pointer exception is the most popular exception found in the runtime. This is like okay, Java introduced uh, you know all these memory tricks, blah blah blah. But still, if you if the value is uninitialized. Then you have a you have a problem. It's not Objective C when you can use any method on, uh, on an empty object. So the pattern we used actually to to get all users from the API. Um, okay, so we catch IO exception, no exception, <laughs> and return an empty ar array list of uh, users. Uh, why so? Um, as I'm a I'm a customer, right? I see the application and fetches the users logged into my to my service. Um, and I'm not a developer. Do I care if it's empty collection or null? Will the UI differ a lot? In some cases, yes, I admit. But in most cases, you return an, em an empty uh, instance. So in this case, if it's a collection, return an empty collection. If you have like uh, an object you expect to, 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 to see, uh, so maybe you can have like a default object, so like empty strings, not null strings, because it also might break uh, your code. But using this pattern, actually, we removed a lot of problems about okay, null pointer exception from this client. Damn, okay, again, 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 again. And while we introduced this this pattern, actually, uh, the number of tickets come which were coming to our Jira, uh, it was drastically dropped down. Like two third, because this is the first. This is the first uh, exception you're gonna see while we're testing your app. So, okay. So let's proceed with Java. So, most of the libraries which are monitoring the device state or the application state, um, they are started uh, using some kind of static method like init, start, initiate, whatever. Which is cool. It's easy. You don't need to worry about what kind of constructor. Blah blah blah. It's just. It's just. Comfortable. Okay, but it's awesome. As I said in my briefing, that uh, on, on the web page, uh, this is like a story when you have version 1.0 and you like to add new stuff. So um, in some cases, you b you need to extend the interface to run the SDK to initiate it because you have more functionality. So probably you have more configurations. As my professor at the university said, if it's something config uh, I mean, that can be can be configured. Just provide the interface to the user. Just, 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 just do it because maybe in some edge case they they're gonna need uh, this uh, this case. So actually, while we're providing more uh, functionality our code, the init interface becomes very complex. Here, this is what uh, actually we've been. This was like a version one four point oh for me when I when I joined, and. Um, I really encourage to use the builder pattern because, uh, first of all, you have everything is organized with a good names. It's it's awesome. You pass only one parameter, so if you extend your library with some new features, it's cool because it reads only one configuration. Not uh, requires you to create another static method with just you know extending the number of parameters, and moreover, in this case. We have at the beginning three strings, two booleans, and one integer. So I think, okay, um, it doesn't sound, um, it doesn't look good. For example, I'd like to have default user and default password next to each other because they lo logically they're bound, right? So if you if, if you're gonna meet this, this interface where default password is the, the last parameter, it's not it's not possible to change it. It's just a one-way ticket. It's there's not, not nothing you can do here, right? So, and moreover, for example, check style, it has uh, one of the f mm, um, features enabled by default that checks how much, uh, how, how many how many parameters a method has. I think it's number six or seven. Um, and it, they did it on purpose because you need to pass, you know, this, this really long line code to your SDK to make it run. Sounds lame. Okay, you can have like a version with one parameter, two, three, four, five, but five, actually you can, do I need actually those two? 
it's 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 been confusing. So, for example, if you're using the, uh, the the builder pattern, actually, if you need if you think about the default user, the default user must go with the default password because this is this is logic for you. So you can actually bundle with default user e uh, email and the password here, right? With one method, and then you a little bit more safe. So um, to conclude the previous slide, uh, it's just to organize. Uh, the way you um, start your SDK, it's much much easier for validation because, uh, for example, here you can check actually using the regex if it's the URL or not. Instead of you know looking for these parameters, have this this long of you know if 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 if. if, if. Next thing is that uh, the developer can pass uh, the parameters that he would, he would like to. You're not forcing anyone to pass all of them because I don't understand why I need to pass all arguments. It's very common when you use the cursor and the database interface in Android is sometimes you, um, what I don't need this parameter. Why I, what does it do actually? So okay, they made some mistakes maybe, but uh if you create your own interface, um you have a better better inputs. And the last thing it's handling the default values. So um, instead of checking, for example, if the past argument was null, so for example, the default password here and the default user that nulls, so actually you need to check those. Okay, so they were nulls, so actually I need to initiate them to some kind of anonymous at blah, 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 with password 123. So you can easily you know, bundle them with within actually this method or maybe during the creation of the builder itself. So you have like a, you, you split the, the logic uh, between the different methods. What's next? Ha, huh, this, this is very controversial. So Java. Um, Java is like a collection of methods, fields, constructors, all the kind of bytecode to, it's just, it's just there. We all know it. And we have visibility. Default, so it's with no prefix, uh, private, protected, public. These are the four default one um, in Java. Um, so default is something which is visible only along the package. Private is only visible uh, only within the scope of the class. Protected is used f uh, ma mainly for inheritance. And public, as it says, is just available to um, a wider audience. So here I use default on public. I don't care about private or protected. I use only public where um, uh, for co my code completion uh, looks nicer because one one of the class might have like twenty of methods, but actually I need to uh, I, exposition is just maybe two, so it's cool. It's just a full code completion. Uh, other than that, I use default. I don't care about the private or protected. It's uh, if you try to use Python or any any modern language, they just don't care because they are right. First of all, because of the reflection. So basically, you can access the private field uh, using reflection. If it's final, okay, then you cannot set, can't uh, set the new value, but still you can do it with within the public one. So it's cool. This is actually um, I learned from extending Roboelectric. If you know Roboelectric, the the guys from from Pivotal Labs to to it used to be one of the uh, one and the only one test framework for Android. Right now we have a Google version, which is which is cool. They really don't follow the rule. They don't allow anyone to overwrite uh, the logic. They just don't care. And if you'd like to extend the library or just add some functionality or even try to fix some some edge cases, it's not mm, possible. Why? Because they made it made, made it part private. So what you need to do? Copy the class to your source code, change the package name, do some inheritance, do some magic. It it would work anyway. So why why to fight with this, this private protected? Even so, if someone is changing your codes, it, uh, they do it on, on, it's their fault. You provided the version which works. With the interface you provided, it just works. Okay, um, so still, uh, Android, we are the conference uh, Android developers, so let's go to Android. So, um, uh, most of you have seen the in edit mode, this is a method in, uh, in the view class, uh, which actually determines if the view is drawn in Android Studio or just in other. Um, external tool to, to preview your layouts. 
And um, to be honest, I usually was using it only to disable some other components, uh, aka uh, dependency ejection, because uh, the preview doesn't doesn't understand dependency ejection, and I don't blame it. Um, but actually, I was thinking about two 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 examples. Um, I decided to also show only one because it's much uh, it's much simpler. So, for example, uh, if you'd like to test in your preview how your widget would look like if you have a long text and a short text. So actually you can invert it, actually if you are in edit mode, so if I'm in Android Studio and the, the text is like 30 characters long, how it would look like. The, the drawback is that you need to recompile the Java class to make the preview um, you know, understand the, the, the new code. But um, this is like a trick you can try to make some logic right now because we have if statement, this is a logic. This is, this is not something we can easily achieve within the XML files. You can have like two text views along with each other with different uh, different sizes, but still, this is like a, like a hint. Maybe uh, it will solve your uh, living problems. Anyway, let's go further. This is something I added like before the presentation. <laughs> um, so, if you ship your code to um, to someone and you don't know what kind of devices are gonna be uh, used. So usually you used uh, build version SDK in to determine what kind of uh, device you're targeting. So if you're using Lollipop, then I can access some Lollipop methods. Uh, if I'm using Marshmallow and all the other, let's say, tricks too. Like last, last week I was in DevFest in Warsaw that the guy actually used it very often to determine what kind of data access storage they, uh, he needs to tr uh, hack. But it's cool, it's, it was used uh, for a long time, but um, it was a talk before mine, about the runtime permissions, this is um, uh, f um, very, very uh, unhandy, I would say, to, to, to cover. So, how to how to get it? So, the, actually, there is a value you can use from the from the manifest, and why it's important? Because, for example, uh, as I said at the beginning, be defensive. So, you, if you don't have this location permission, because um, the, you don't, it's not like a requirement for for your library. It's just a good good to have. So usually you just check the manifest provider. I mean, there's like an interface to check what kind of permissions that are, are um, in your scope. But in, in Marshmallow, it changes. Uh, <laughs> the story is much more complicated because actually at the beginning of the, of the run, actually, if you ask the, uh, the manifest, it says no. Because it needs to wait for the user to accept the, the permission. And then further you can you can okay it's available. Why is very important? Because if you target if 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 your application your SDK is run uh, with the application which is targeting Marshmallow, then you need to know that the permission by default. I mean, here in mind that is going to be disabled, and maybe uh, use the method from uh, from the activity uh, to ask for the permission. Without that, how you can you know recognize? Okay, I'm running Marshmallow, but if uh, if I'm running actually uh, with application which is targeting Marshmallow or not, it's a small thing, but it might be might be very useful. Empty slide. Oh, oh, this one. Uh, so uh, this is a very very good hint, but I learned it like a few times. Um, how many of you try to lo to write some kind of like Picasso or Glide library to load images and uh, then dynamically just put them into image view? I presume half of the room. Uh, right now we have a very good library, so we don't care, but it's still like a valid uh, valid case. So the interface I would imagine is just uh, pass the URL to the resource and uh, re the reference to the to the widget. For example, in in this case, let's let it be let just a image view. Cool, it will work. But um, when you pass arguments, which are extended from view uh, or activity or in any kind of um, class which is um, bound with UI, actually, it often leads to memory leak. Why? Because the key might be flooded with requests holding all the references. So if you have, for example, uh, a list view, it can uh, load like 100 elements, but you choose one and go to the another activity. So actually, uh, st still, your cache is ha is uh, 
is having all the references to the image views, which means that the activity you've seen before cannot be, uh, let's say, um, they, they cannot remove the memory which is not used because you have str still a strong reference. It means for the, for the GC that, oh, no, no, sorry, I'm using it, don't touch it, right? We understand it. So uh, when I was debugging quite often the memory leaks, I used this uh, the very nice tool from Android Studio. Actually, it was even in, uh, in, uh, in Eclipse, uh, to memory profiler to, s to see how many instances of my activity are running. And I was wondering, why the hell I have four activities why I see when I see one? And then I realized, okay, it's, uh, it's not the case. So um, how to work with it? Use weak reference. And if, uh, if, if, if the, your, your request is um, getting to the end, you try to put the image to the image view check, okay, the weak reference says this is, it has been uh, cleaned uh, with GC. So actually there's no more job for me, just, I just drop the bitmap and it's cool. No memory leaks. Really, in our country, when you, s when you pass it to some kind of caches and you see view activity or any kind of UI element, try to think, weak, activ uh, weak reference. Okay, uh, this is one of the last slides uh, I prepared um, from Android Studio. So the great profilers, I uh, previously, um, like, I mean, Android Studio 1.0, did, it didn't have all of them, but right now it's, it's awesome. So um, for example, as, as me <laughs> standing here, I use uh, memory usage to monitor logic, uh, cache of my logic. So if I'm adding new stuff, but it's uh, nothing is getting uh, cleaned by the GC, Still a reference to the weak reference. Um, the CPU to check how my widgets are um, uh, behaving while I'm, you know, sliding and stopping. So usually, when you stop, the the, the CPU graph should drop down because uh, Android is done this way. That if it's, if it's not nothing's happening, then there's nothing need to to be recalculated. So the CPU it should be like b around zero. And the last one, actually, to uh, it's also connected with cache. So uh, if you have like this this image cache, and you see that your cache is supposed to be full, so all the images are actually somewhere stored, and you see some network traffic, you know, just pinging, that it means that your cache is failing. It fetches some resources from from the stream. So small stuff, but still very useful. So the progot, um, all my animations didn't work. So anyway. This is a spoiler. Um, <laughs> that's right, I can't can help it. Um, configuration versus transparency. Choose this one. S many of the customers, the big one, they use ProGuard to enable some kind of security prof profits. I'm not talking about uh, efficiency. They want to obfuscate the code because the IT department says so that we need to obfuscate the code. And they don't care. So if it's possible, uh, Use, I mean, write the write the library in the in this case that it's uh, it can be used with Progress with no problems. Of course, you can, as I said, just prepare the copy paste configuration for, um, to to, to Progress, but still, um, this doesn't go default with Gradle. So if you add this compile dependency, uh, it doesn't go there. In the developer must go to your help website and troubleshooting Progress. Please paste these values to your default Progress blah 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 configuration to make it work. Okay, um, how often do you read help pages? Yes. So, that was the last one. So, uh, oh no. License. Another. If there's no license, uh, no major customer will use it. They need to have a license. If it's Apache, if it's MIT, still it's very <coughs> important to provide a license. Without a license, the they don't want to even consider to use it because they might they might be too dangerous for them to handle the all the law uh, problems they might encourage because later on you can just add the license and it says it's MIT which it cannot be shipped you know with your open source code blah 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 which is a very bad result so for example if you're using your code and you'd like to have a wide audience okay there's even a license uh, it's like WTF or something um, yeah. Uh, or uh, or Apache actually is very is very convenient, but it must be present in uh, in your bundle. Without it, your audience is getting smaller because no big customer would try to use your code. And actually, this is the end. Thank you.